Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a good one. We have a 2016 Toyota 4Runner. Uh, basically what happened on this one is the customer was complaining of a rear brake noise. They took it to the dealer on several occasions because they have a warranty. And for some reason they were never able to figure out what was going on, which is kind of weird. Um, so this guy brings me his other cars that are out of warranty. He decided to bring me this. And essentially what happened is he needs rear brakes. Um, I don't know why they couldn't figure this out, but you can clearly see on here, the rotor is a little bit scored up. You can see a little bit of scoring. And if we take a look at the brake pad material, you can clearly see there we're pretty much running low. We're almost metal to metal. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is basically a standard brake job. Um, it's quite simple, I've covered this before, but this is always typically what I get in the shop. Brakes are a very, very common occurrence here. Um, so I'll just try to give you little tips and tricks on how to do this, but it's quite simple. So first place that we're gonna start off with is removing the caliper. So what I'm gonna do is position you guys so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay guys, so I got you positioned behind the caliper where most of the work is done. So basically I'm gonna start off by removing the caliper. Now this video I'm gonna try to do in real time so you guys you just can kind of see it. I know my other videos I kind of turn them on and off, but in this video I'm gonna try to do a full on video. So we're gonna remove the 17 millimeters. Now these bolts do have a tendency to get a lot of rust on the outside so your sockets could get stuck. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. Now I went ahead and I already pre-loosened them. I just cracked them with another wrench that I have here. So looks like I'm gonna need that wrench for the top one because my gun will not go in there. So I'm just gonna have to take this off by hand. I don't really do this very often where you're doing it by hand. I'm so used to power tools. Um, usually everything right now is electric. It's kind of awesome. I like to use Milwaukee. Um, I know there's a lot of different variances out there. You know, some people like the wall. The only reason why I'm with Milwaukee is that's basically what I bought and I've had them since the beginning and I've always had their batteries. So I just kept buying more and more Milwaukee and you know, I can't complain. So. After you get these two bolts off, essentially what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna press in the caliper a little bit. Now this caliper, you could probably get it off and pry it off, but a mechanics tr trick that we do is basically, if you take a screwdriver or something like this, if you basically put it in this opening here and you just basically yank forward after you have it on a good footing, you'll notice that the caliper is starting to, you know, decompress in there. You're basically pushing the piston back in. So once you do that, you guys can probably see here, let me see if I could get it flipped around. We pretty much have most of that piston pushed in. Um, what I'm gonna do basically is take my piston pushing tool, which is like this. You just basically press it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put it into my caliper like so. And what I'm gonna do is push it in the rest of the way it's not really much, it's more like a quarter of the piston that's left after you do it that way. Now, this car is fairly new, it's only a few years old. Um, sometimes they'll fight you. This one, they push in like butter. So what we're gonna do now is basically get the caliper out the way. I'm just gonna put it up here on the rear axle. Uh, just kinda tuck it out underneath here so it's not in our way. So the next step is you got the bracket to take off. These are basically two 17 millimeters. Um, basically, crack them loose by hand first, guys. I uh, can't stress this enough. And when you loosen things, one thing that I've learned throughout the years, I have a ratchet end on this bad boy and I have a solid end. You break them loose with the solid end. If you use your ratchet end to break bolts loose a lot, you're gonna wind up damaging the little teeth in here. You're just gonna wind up breaking it. So. Once I break them off by hand, now I could have used my impact, but these Toyota bolts, I, I just don't like the way the coatings are on them. They always seize. So I'm gonna grab my little gun and just remove them. Now, this is a 3 8 Milwaukee stubby impact that I use with a swivel. And basically get in there. If you can line it up. And once you remove those two 17 millimeters, essentially you are home free and then what you could do is just remove your brake pads by pressing them in now let me show you guys because it was really hard to pick up on camera here this is essentially what is left 
of the brake pad. So it should look something like this with some material on there. You can see this one's getting kind of low, but this one, I mean, there's the back. That's where the material should be, and you can clearly see there's nothing left. So, you know, this is very common. I don't know why. Customers always seem to basically bring in brakes until the point they grind. I have a Jeep behind me right here. I'll make a video on that too. You can kind of see the orange dust on that wheel. That guy did a pretty bad job. He ground up his rotors and calipers pretty good. So I'll show you guys that one in the next video. Okay, guys. So I went ahead and I swapped out the camera. Let me try to get this light out of your eyes so you guys can see a little bit better. So what you're going to want to do now is basically take your hammer and uh, I've kind of covered this before. If you're going to be saving the rotor, you want to tap here. If you don't care, you could tap, you know, here and you'll pretty much get a new rotor. Now, never hit it on this service unless you're getting a new rotor. Now, I have new rotors on this one, but I'm going to demonstrate hitting between the hat. You always got to be careful. You don't want to hit the studs or hit the hub. Basically, you line yourself up and you just do that. Always in between. Now, this is fairly a newer car. They come off pretty quick now. If you guys notice here, this is not sliding off. This one does have brake shoes for the parking brake. Two ways to go about that. You can release the tension on them a little bit. It'll help slide. Or what I do is I'll grab the rotor, I'll pull. And if you give it a tap or two, like that, as you're pulling out, what it'll do is it'll basically push those shoes and line them up. And you can get your rotor off. Um, basically... What I was doing when I was hammering right now is these shoes are able to move. So when you tap it, you're basically pushing them in together and you're driving them at their even point so you can get the rotor off easily. So the next step in this is basically I grab my compressed air. Now, you know, you shouldn't be breathing in brake dust, guys. So make sure you guys have a mask or, you know, personal protection here. But I just blow out the drum portion you don't want to have any dirt or any debris here because it can make a noise so i'm going to go ahead and blow that out so once you blow that out the next stage that you want to do is basically clean your hub flange portion now i'm gonna to have to do this off camera but what i do basically is i got a specialty tool that goes onto the stud it'll clear it 3m makes it it's called a roll lock and then i take my grinder wheel and I basically clean it down um, these are not horrible at all as a matter of fact you could probably just slap a new rotor on here and it's not really gonna have an issue because it's not really rotted up or anything but I still cleaned the surface area so I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and get my rotor on here simply because you guys don't want to see me cleaning for like 10 minutes so let me get that done okay guys so I cleaned up my flange area and I got my rotor on there uh, it's pretty simple the rotor just slides just how you took it off that's essentially how it works. Um, a lot of people like to put grease on their hub or something of that sort. I don't. I just dry them up and put them on that way. Um, the worst thing that I think can happen is if you put grease on here, if you have grease between the rotor and the, uh, the hub, it can the grease can act like a little hydraulic pressure, and it could kind of force the hub and the disc away from each other. That's just a theory that I think of. Uh, I'm not going to say that that is an actual fact. But basically, that's what I think. If I put anything in between, like grease, it could act, you know, like a compression situation, possibly cause any rotor vibration or cause some sort of wheel vibration. So I just pretty much grind them down, break clean them, dry them, put this on. Worst case scenario, if you got something, you know, like a little bit of penetrating oil just to keep it wet, help it from rusting for a couple months, you could probably spray that on there. But again, it, it washes away. So really, won't really help you too much. Um, so now that we got the new rotor on there, our next step is going to be cleaning up our caliper bracket. So like I've done in previous videos, I have, you know, tutorials on how to do these. Um, essentially what you want to do is you start off by removing the old, you know, shims. So you want to take these off. If these are very difficult to take off where you can use a screwdriver or whatever you have, pry them off. I just take them off by hand. Again, this car is fairly new, so... It's not really an issue. Um, so what I'm going to be cleaning now is, like always, you want to get in these areas right here. Um, these aren't as horrible as they look on camera. Um, you just basically want to clean these. I'm going to take my wire brush to it and get these cleaned up. 
Um, again, I'm going to do this off camera. I've kind of covered this. I'll probably link my tutorial down in the video on how to do the caliper bracket. So I won't be showing you guys this stuff either. When it comes to the cleaning portions, it's just unnecessary minutes added to the video. And I just try to give you guys the core details, not show you the little things that take time that anyone can figure out. Okay, guys, so I'm back. I cleaned up my bracket um, and I got most of the shims on there. So what I did was I cleaned out my area. I put some lube on here, as you can see. I use uh, some brake lube. It's a uh, high temperature purple ceramic silicone based lube and I got my shim. So basically I want to cover a little bit of this. Now this is a shim. Uh, if you guys can clearly see this side has a little tang that sticks out. Um, whenever you have one of these, now these vary, they could be very different, but the inside edge is normally pretty clean. There's nothing sticking out because that would be facing the rotor. Normally the outside edges that, you know, face away from the rotor are the ones that have the little tangs. So when you get these, they just come in a bag, they're mixed. They don't really have a left, a right, or whatever you want to call it. So what you want to do is basically do your due diligence. Like you can see on this one, uh, the outside portion, let me see here, get you guys specced in. The outside has the tang here, and then the inside, if you guys can see, has nothing. It's pretty much flat because the rotor will reside in this general area right here. So you don't want to have it sticking out. If you were to put this side facing inward towards the rotor one on most of them it's impossible but if you were to do it what essentially will happen you'll get a bunch of noise like you'll know right away but it's best not to do that because you don't want to score up your rotor i just thought i'd add that in as a tip so let me get this other one on there and we'll bolt up the bracket okay guys so i got my bracket everything is solid on here uh what we're going to do next is basically bolt it up so let me put the camera right behind here so you guys can basically see what i'm doing hopefully uh, let's see. All right, that seems to be pretty good. So what you're gonna want to do here is just like every other brake job, you're gonna take your bracket and you're gonna basically bolt it up. So push that in there, and then now I can't see because the camera's in the way, but I can do these by feel. Always hand thread, guys. If you don't hand thread, you will strip these out. Uh, never just take your gun and go to town on them, because. You know, I've done it, and it's horrible. At the least case scenario, you just strip the bracket, and you buy a new bracket, and you call it a day. But if your threads are in the knuckle or in another part of the assembly that are not the bracket, which is normally the cheaper item, worst case, you buy a caliper that comes with a bracket if you can't find the bracket, uh, and you swap them out. But if you strip the threads and it goes into a knuckle, I mean, it's just horrible. Once you do that, I mean, you're going to be buying a new knuckle. Knuckles can cost anywhere and upwards of a bunch of money. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my 17 millimeter and I'm going to tighten these up. Now you can torque these on. I mean, look at the torque specs. I normally gun them on and I just tighten them up by hand. I normally do the feel method on these. So once I have my gun on there, now this gun doesn't really go too tight. Uh, the settings I've set it pretty low and then what I basically do is I just take my ratchet and just tighten them um, These don't need a whole bunch, you know, you just grab it give it a nice snug and as you guys can see I'm pretty much torquing it to the point where the truck is moving on the lift uh, I just get it nice and tight like people say the German torque spec good and tight once you get that you're good now I'm not gonna say they shouldn't look up the spec, but Honestly, being a everyday mechanic here, you don't have time to just look up specs for every little thing. Uh, things like this, I've been doing them for years the way I've been doing them, and I've never really had any issues. So, you know, I just continue to do them that way. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to get the brake pads on there. Now, I'm going to try to show you, but it'll be very difficult. Um, basically, what you're going to want to do, and again, you don't touch the... You don't want to touch this surface area with any grease or anything on your hands. You always want to grab it from the back. But basically what you're going to be doing is sliding these in there. So I can already tell I can't do this with the camera in my way. So let me get the camera out of here and then I'll be able to do it. So give me a second, guys. I'll be back with you. Okay, guys. So I went ahead and I put my brake pads in. It just would have been difficult with the camera in the way because normally you got to get in there to line it up. Uh, you can always put the brake pads on before you bolt up the bracket on the bench. reason why I don't do it like that is there's potential to grab them. If one of them slips, you'll probably have greasy hands and you grab them because you don't want to get any grease on your friction material. Uh, so that's the way I do it. So next thing that we're going to grab is we're going to grab our caliper. 
Now we already pushed in this piston. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grease up everything here. Basically I'm gonna grease up the piston back here and the little fingers that hold the outer pad in. Actually guys, I'm gonna try to do this on camera. The reason why I don't do it on camera is because you gotta hold up the caliper and it's a bad angle, but I figure I'll show you guys. So I went ahead and I got my brush here with the lube. What you're gonna wanna do is basically just lubricate that and then turn around and you know put some grease on here now some people like to grease up the back of the pad keyword there is the back of the pad not the front i'll be honest with you guys i i'll tell you a quick little story i used to work at a shop that instead of someone lubricating this portion i believe it was a loop tech you know the guy was on the job for i think a couple months and the boss gave him his first shot at like hey I want to show you some initiative, so show me what you can do basically, try to move the poor guy up. So first brake job that he gets, um, basically he takes the brake pad and he lubricates the surface that faces the rotor, which is the friction material. And he does everything looped up basically, I mean front, back, sides, you name it, this guy pretty much dipped the whole pad in the grease. Um, puts everything back together. Now I was the one that was in charge of kind of overlooking him because he was working next to me. But I was busy with my work and I was flat rate, so I had to continue working. You know, I didn't really get paid to babysit him, but I would help him out along the way, obviously, help your neighbor. Um, but I figured brake job, you know, pretty standard. Anyone knows how to do it. So I let him do his thing. And then in the end, uh, I'm like, before you put the wheels on, I got to inspect everything, you know, just to make sure. And the boss would be called over and he would inspect everything to give this guy a shot. Um, so essentially, I check it out and everything was greased. And I couldn't even save him, you know, and buy him some time. The boss came up right after he was done. He's like, all right, let's see how you did. And we just see like, everything's greased up. I mean, the pad, inside out, everything. And we're like, what the hell? And luckily we caught it because, I mean, realistically, the car probably would have burned off the grease and brake, but it would have had a horrible noise forever. And the customer would have came back. I mean, it's just, you know, it is what it is. It's just one of those quick stories that, you know, that I'd mention. Uh, I've seen a lot of funny stuff happen throughout the years, guys. I mean... Don't get me wrong, I've done my fair share of dumb things too, like I'm not perfect myself, but you know, I've never really made huge mistakes like that, I mean, I don't know if I would even call that a mistake, I would just call it just blatant not knowing what you're doing and not really caring, because you know, you gotta remember, even if you're entry level in this business, you're not gonna know everything, but if you're gonna say you wanna work on cars, at least follow through and get to know how cars operate and how things are done. Don't ever go into a job assuming you know how to do it. Um, always do your homework. Know how stuff is done and then go ahead and proceed. So next step that we're going to do here, you know, is uh, I cleaned off my pins. Go ahead and loop these up. Um, as you guys saw, I got my caliper on there. So let me loop these off camera, but I'm still here. I'm just kind of moving away. Um, I do have my tool cart that I pretty much have all my tools on for this job. I'll show you guys that right before the video ends. Uh, I like having everything mobile even though my shop is not really that big it's still nice to have a, a little cart so next what i'm doing here is lining up the boot and i greased up my pin as you guys can see and i'm going to go ahead and slide it in the caliper and uh true to like everything else make sure you hand tighten uh can't stress this enough it's i've just seen so many bad things happen uh, stripping a bolt is not the best thing in the world. So let me go ahead and bolt these up and I'll be back with you guys. All right, guys, sorry that, uh, I had to break away from the video there real quick. I had a, uh, parts delivery. It's kind of hard for me to film videos cause I'm here by myself. Uh, basically I do everything. And then if someone comes in like a customer or a supplier dropping off of parts, I normally got to stop the video and go there. So I apologize guys. I was trying to make this a full on non-stop version of the video but it's just really challenging especially here because like i said it's a one-man operation here i do everything um if you guys want to know more about me you know just ask in the comments and maybe one of these days i'll make a video just kind of explaining who i am uh how long i've been doing this for and what got me to where i'm at today uh, a lot of people don't know this but i might as well just go ahead and say it here because i'm sure you guys could probably figure it out uh, if I'm the only person here, that makes me pretty much everything. So, yes, guys, this is my own shop. Um, just to give you a short, quick 
explanation is I just got sick and tired of working for people. Being a mechanic in, uh, at least in the Midwest, in the Chicago area, I mean, people don't appreciate you. I've worked for numerous dealers. I've had experience across a lot of car lines. And basically what I found is that, you know, it's, it's hard to work at a dealer. Uh, people just don't care for mechanics, you know. Even though we, uh, we are very useful, we get a lot of stuff done, people just think that they could take advantage of us. I mean, I worked at dealers where, you know, like what makes me different? Like imagine if your boss coming up to you and yelling at you and swearing at you. I mean, come on. I don't need that kind of disrespect. Now in this field, you got to have tough skin. I don't really care. You can swear at me. You know, you can say anything and everything. It doesn't really bother me, guys. But the thing is, I don't like working in a hostile environment like that. Um, most mechanics in general are going to be, you know, back and forth with banter. But to have a boss that sits there and just treats you like a, a piece of doo-doo, you know, not to swear here on YouTube. I don't want to get, you know, my video taken down or anything. But basically, if you get treated like crap, you know, you're not going to want to work there. Um, the places that I did work at that had a really good, you know, reputation and things like that. Sometimes they had like crazy production numbers. Um, I worked at a very high end shop. We did a lot of high end work and, you know, like every business, you know, they look at the previous year and then they build off of that for their next year project projections. So if, let's say I, in the second week of the year, I did, you know, let's say 108 hours in labor time. Uh, now, that's kind of, you know, hard to do, but let's, as an example, let's say 108 hours I did week two of last year, then this week, uh, a year later, on the second week, they're going to want me to do, you know, let's say 20% more than that, and it was just unrealistic, because as a mechanic, I can't do more work if the work isn't coming in, and I'm not going to just upsell and, you know, tell people, hey, you need breaks when they don't need them as of yet, and that's kind of what they were hinting about, they're like, yeah, you know, we just got to make, uh, more and more revenue so you got to sell more stuff but what can you sell if there's nothing that the car needs you know it's like that uh wink wink kind of moment like find something that's essentially what they were doing but it's kind of funny because they were a good shop but you know whatever they do what they do and i'm not going to mention any names guys you know it's just my experiences um eventually i'm planning on doing like a little car talk series where i just kind of sit down and you know talk banter about what's going on in the field um, I'm not really going to get into like world politics and things like that. I strictly keep it all car and mechanical, uh, things like that, you know, uh, I try not to get into anything else, at least on this channel. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, that is, uh, how the brakes are done. And that is a little bit about me. Um, uh, if you like this video and you found it interesting, please comment, like, and subscribe. Um, and I'll catch you guys on the next repair. So you guys have a good one.